Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. We've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. Over the centuries, the villagers had several names. Sircell, Churchill with an E, but by the middle of the 16th century, it had settled on Churchill. We don't normally go to any great lengths to explain the weird names there are in the Cotswolds, but to avoid everyone leaping to the natural but inaccurate conclusion that it has something to do with Winston and his local family at Blenheim, it's worth just mentioning the name on this occasion. It probably derives from the Old English word sirk, which means hill, and often refers to a burial place, the remains of several of which are to be found in the vicinity. This does strongly suggest that there was a settlement here in prehistoric times. The earliest settlement that we would recognise as a village was burned to the ground on the 30th of July 1684. All that is left are humps and bumps in the fields in the valley, but it is fascinating to look at, as you can see where the cottages were and where the village street lay. It seems the fire was started by the local baker, possibly trying to find a way to avoid the hearth tax. This was a tax familiar as far back as the Byzantine Empire, but introduced to England at the restoration of the monarchy in 1662 in order to help provide the enormous income Charles II was believed to need at the time. Needless to say, it caused some resentment. In the case of this village, it led to disaster as the whole place was consumed by fire, leaving nothing standing but the church. The villagers rebuilt on the hill above from stone rather than wood, and despite several fires since, it has survived to tell the tale. All but the nave of the old church was demolished in the early 19th century, and a new church built at the top of the hill financed entirely by the Lord of the Manor, James Horton Langston, who owned the Sarsden estate, which at the time, indeed until the end of the First World War, included the village of Churchill. The nave of the old church that still exists, beautifully maintained by the Churchill Old Church Preservation Society, contains a fantastic little museum. This place is a perfect Cotswold gem. It holds exhibits telling the story of some of its local heroes, including Warren Hastings, who was born just up the road, and after a highly checkered career, ended up spending his last years, having been cleared of all the charges trumped up against him, living in Dalesford House nearby, and is buried in the village church at Dalesford. We have already been to the village of Dalesford and you can find our film on our list. Their latest exhibition, completed in April 2024, celebrates the lives of some highly distinguished women who were either born or lived in the village. It is truly fascinating and I can't recommend this place highly enough. Its opening hours are limited to 2.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. on Saturdays, Sundays and bank holidays, but they will consider opening for groups if you call them. They have a website at churchillheritage.org.uk for more details. The new Church of All Saints at the top of the hill and built as we've heard by the Lord of the Sarston Estate, James Langston in 1826, is in the perpendicular style. The impressive tower is a two-thirds scale replica of the tower at Magdalen College in Oxford. 
and the five-bay hammer-beam roof is patterned on that of the Hall of Christ Church in Oxford. The interior was restored and the West Gallery removed in 1884 by one A.W. Blomfield, who introduced a choir enclosure stretching into the nave. Also at this time, the Rerodos chancel wall decoration, floor tiling and probably the stone font and the pulpit were added. The new West Gallery with meeting rooms below built in 1999 by Scott and Tolliday of Whitney, were renewed as recently as 2007 after another one of the village's famous fires. Just north of the church is an enormous memorial fountain erected in the memory of James Horton Langston by his daughter Julia, Countess of Ducey, this is a name we will hear more of in our travels in the near future. Pevsner himself was deeply scathing of this memorial, describing it as memorably ugly. The latest edition of his wonderful series, The Buildings of England, is a little less emphatic, but still not enthusiastic. Your views would be much appreciated. It's well worth visiting this village for the Heritage Centre alone, but the rest of the village has things worth seeing as well. It also has a terrific pub opposite the new church called the Checkers, where great food and a warm welcome is to be found.